Our next topic is Parkinson's disease. We'll review the pathophysiology and current treatments and nursing care and share some experiences in working with these clients. Parkinson's disease, or PD, is a movement disorder that affects coordination and involuntary motor function. The most common type of Parkinson's disease is idiopathic Parkinson's, developing when part of the basal ganglia degenerates, causing a deficiency in the production of dopamine. The loss of dopamine results in difficulty refining voluntary movements. Normally, the effects of dopamine and acetylcholine balance each other. But because only dopamine is reduced with PD, receptors are excessively stimulated by a relative increase in acetylcholine. The effect interferes with the client's ability to control or initiate voluntary movement. Who is at risk for Parkinson's? Idiopathic Parkinson's disease most often appears in adults over age 50. Why the basal ganglia degenerate is not known. Other Parkinsonian disorders are caused by long-term phenothiazine use, certain toxins, and atherosclerosis. The cardinal symptoms of PD are muscle rigidity, bradykinesia or slow movements, and tremors. Some clients also develop autonomic symptoms and dementia. Signs and symptoms vary with the severity of PD and include flexion of the spine, fingers, and wrists, a slow, shuffling gait that propels clients forward, and difficulty stopping forward motion. Motor activity is slow and uncertain. Clients may have trouble starting actions and have tremors and pill rolling, movements of the fingers. There are various levels of muscle rigidity detected with passive range of motion. There's cogwheel rigidity, which is rhythmic interruptions in movement, plastic rigidity, which is mild restriction in movement, and lead pipe rigidity, when an extremity cannot be moved at all. Your client might have progressively smaller handwriting. That's called micrographia. Changes in voice, difficulty speaking, called dysarthria, a mask-like facial expression. Difficulty chewing and swallowing, drooling, and autonomic dysfunction. That includes orthostatic hypotension, excessive perspiration, changes in skin texture, and oily skin. In addition, clients experience psychosocial changes, specifically depression, mood swings, disturbed sleep, and dementia. There is no specific test for PD. Diagnosis is based on the client's clinical manifestations once other conditions have been ruled out. Drug therapy to increase dopamine is the primary mode of medical management of PD. Dopaminergics such as carbidopa plus levodopa, trade name Cinemet, to treat rigidity, anticholinergics such as trihexaphenidyl, trade name Artane, to control tremors, dopamine receptor agonists such as bromocryptine mesylate, trade name Parlidil, to activate dopamine release and MAO inhibitors such as selegaline, trade name Eldipril, and COMT inhibitors such as Intecapone, trade name Comtan, to reduce the breakdown of dopamine. The effectiveness of dopaminergic drugs is greatest in the first three to five years of therapy. The diminished effectiveness is noted by the on-off phenomenon in which the client's mobility fluctuates. When drug therapy fails, stereotactic pallidotomy may be done to create a lesion in the target area of the brain. This procedure is done by inserting an electrode through a cranial burr hole. Deep brain stimulation is the implantation in the thalamus of an electrode that interferes with the tremors. The electrode is attached to a control device that permits adjustment of the electrical current as the disease progresses. Another more controversial procedure is the transplantation of fetal substantia nigra tissue into the brain. This has been reported to improve motor symptoms. Your nursing assessment of clients who have PD will focus on changes in signs and symptoms. As we mentioned, progression of symptoms is evident when a client develops tolerance to PD drugs. You'll also watch for indications of drug toxicity they would be delirium, cognitive impairment, and hallucinations. Nursing diagnoses that apply to clients who have Parkinson's include 
impaired physical mobility, self-care deficits, risk for injury, impaired nutrition, less than body requirements, impaired verbal communication, ineffective individual and family coping, ineffective therapeutic regimen management. The first nursing diagnosis is impaired physical mobility. Helping clients maintain as much mobility as possible is a team effort. Yoga and Tai Chi can be helpful in the early stage. Later, physical and occupational therapists can design individualized exercise plans that include passive range of motion, muscle stretching, and appropriate activity. Next, self-care deficits. Helping the client continue self-care is also a team effort. In addition to exercise, the environment can be adapted to support maximal possible function. Third, risk for injury. To reduce the risk for injury caused by falls, clients should wear supportive shoes and assistive devices as needed. Environmental hazards must be removed. Fourth, impaired nutrition less than the body requires. Nutritional status is threatened by difficulties with self-feeding, chewing, and swallowing. High-protein, high-calorie dietary supplements may be required to maintain adequate intake. Thickened liquids, including milkshakes and pudding, are easier to swallow than thin liquids. Make sure your client is sitting up for meals and schedule medications so that their peak actions coincide with mealtimes. Your client might have impaired verbal communication. Changes in the voice and difficulties with the mechanics of speech can make it hard to understand the client. Further, some clients automatically repeat what others say or repeat their own vocalizations. Encourage clients to think through what they want to say before beginning to speak. A speech and language pathologist may be able to help with swallowing and with speech. Finally, ineffective individual and family coping and ineffective therapeutic regimen management. Changes in appearance, speech, and mobility impact the client's body image self-esteem, interpersonal relationships, and role performance. The clients and significant others need education and support to help them cope with PD. The client care team can help with setting realistic goals and reinforcing client efforts and achievements. Some clients will benefit from antidepressant medications.